Hello everyone, welcome to my channel and my very messy studio. My name is Mark Kompanietz and I'm a professional artist and an art professor. I use a variety of different media in my work. I use oil, acrylic, I use watercolor, and obviously the focus of my channel which is fountain pen drawing and generally pen and ink. But one of my favorite ways of sketching, particularly outdoors, is to use pen and ink and watercolor together. For me, it's a really fun, energetic way of working, allowing you to capture an atmosphere of a place very quickly and also put in all kinds of interesting details and textures. But today, we're going to be talking about an important chicken or egg question. When using this technique, pen and ink over watercolor, which comes first? While starting with a pen first is probably more common, both are legitimate ways of working and my plan in this video is to talk about the pros and cons of each method and explain why you might want to choose one over the other. And along the way, I'm also going to give you some tips and tricks that will help you create stronger work, whichever method you end up choosing. Let's get started. Okay, I've lightly penciled in my sketch with an HB pencil and I'm starting on the inking process. I'm using a fountain pen with a very flexible nib, which allows me to use different line weights to emphasize depth and to create a large variety of textures. Also, I like that this pen puts down a line that is not terribly thin. When using a pen alone, I prefer extra fine nibs. With the addition of watercolor washes, I found that very fine lines get lost, so having a thicker line provides a better balance between lines and watercolor. By the way, I'm going to list all of the materials I'm using in these demos, the pen, the paper, the watercolor palette, the brushes, in the description section below. For this drawing, I'm using a brown waterproof ink made by D. Atramentis. While I often use black ink for this type of work, I also enjoy the softer, less graphic feel of brown ink, which blends more organically with the watercolor. This is a perfect color, giving the sketch an old-time feel. This ink also has a quality called shading, meaning that it's slightly transparent and can be darker or lighter depending on how it's applied. I have a detailed review of this particular ink on my channel, as well as a tutorial on shading inks, but in short, this ink is awesome, dark enough to go almost black when I need it to, but also capable of being light enough for details in the distance. While in watercolor, it's usually a good idea to work background to foreground. I find that for certain subject matter, inking foreground to background works better. Perhaps another video on these two approaches is necessary, but dealing with one area of distance at a time allows me to systematically regulate my line width with things in the background having thinner lines which gradually thicken as I work towards the foreground. Using difference of line weight is a fast way of introducing a strong sense of depth into your drawing, and one of the advantages of working with the pen first. And since we're now speaking of advantages, let's talk about why you might want to consider starting with ink first. The first and most significant advantage is that it simplifies the watercolor stage. The inking process eliminates many of the things that make watercolor so hard. The rendering of depth and textures, controlling complicated value and color transitions, etc. By getting much of the problem of depth, texture, and detail out of the way with ink, you'll have less work to do in watercolor. Oftentimes, you'll see drawings that so heavily rely on ink that they barely need watercolor to make them look complete. Which leads me to another reason why you might want to start with ink first, if your sketch is going to lean more heavily on ink than on watercolor. If the drawing is going to be mostly pen, with just touches of watercolor, it makes sense to start with ink and focus on getting the desired degree of finish without having to think about the color stage next. But, besides basing your decision on issues of technique, materials also play a large part in making the determination of which method to use. One of the biggest deciding factors is simply the materials you have at hand. If you're using a paper that doesn't take watercolor particularly well, such as a thinner paper that's prone to buckling, or a very smooth paper that makes it difficult to put down even washes, it's best to start with a pen and to rely more on it to complete your sketch. Another reason might be that you're using watercolors that are very cheap, making accurate color mixing difficult. Or it could be that you're using a tiny portable palette or water brushes. In short, anything that makes watercoloring more of a challenge might make you decide to go heavier with a pen and start working with it first. In this drawing, neither the paper or other materials are the determining factor. I'm using a lightweight watercolor paper here made by Hahnenmühle, 
This paper is very nice just for pure watercolor, but it's also relatively smooth, somewhere between hot and cold press, which allows me to start in either direction, either with watercolor first or pen and ink first. Now let's discuss the drawbacks. What are the problems with starting with pen first? The first is purely technical. You have to use a pen filled with waterproof ink. That severely limits the choice of ink that you use, and if you're using a pen with ink cartridges, even more so. Then there's the issue of drying time, especially if you're using a flex pen like I am that puts down very wet lines. Under certain weather conditions, and depending on the absorbency of the paper, drying time can be significant. And even then, waterproof ink is not as waterproof as shellac or acrylic based ink used with dip pens, and a touch of residue will always contaminate the watercolor washes you place on top of it. This is particularly true if you're working on watercolor paper that has been treated with a coating to limit its absorbency. Many so-called bulletproof inks, such as Noodler's Black, work by reacting with the cellulose in the paper, and that cannot happen if the ink sits on the surface, which will always result in some residue when you go over it with water. The second, more important disadvantage is this, that it's hard to know how dark you need to go. White paper is tricky to work on in that everything on it looks very dark, which tricks you into making things way too light. This is why it's often the case that once you put down the watercolor wash, you realize that in some places the ink gets lost. The key is to work darker than you think you need to, requiring you to anticipate the wash layers that go on top. But this is tricky, and I often find myself working way lighter than I should, and only realizing that I should have worked much darker only after I've started in on the watercolor. Another potential drawback is that many watercolor pigments are not fully transparent and will have a tendency to muddy your line work. Now, of course, you can always go over the drawing again to strengthen the lines, but those lines will never look as clean or spontaneous as when they're put in at the beginning. Here's the completed drawing starting with pen and finishing with watercolor. Not a bad attempt, but I think it suffers from some of the problems I've touched on, with the lines being a little bit too fine in the background and getting lost, and the washes in the foreground going a little too dark in a few places and obscuring the line work. Furthermore, because I was careful not to obscure that line work, my color mixtures were all slightly on the lighter side, making the final image a touch paler and less saturated than I'd like. Let's try a sketch where I start with watercolor first. I'm using the exact same materials here, just switching the order of how I do things. Once again, I've penciled in the composition, but now go directly into watercolor. And while I'm working, let's talk about the advantages of this method. The first advantage is purely technical. I don't need waterproof ink. This seems like a minor advantage, but regular water-soluble inks are much easier to access and come in a greater variety. Furthermore, waterproof inks have their problems. They have the potential to clog your pens, and you have to make sure to clean them regularly. Even then, I try not to use waterproof inks in pens that I can't thoroughly disassemble and clean. And I would never use waterproof ink in any of my vintage pens. Working with watercolor first allows me to use any ink I want, waterproof or not. Another thing to consider is that waterproof inks don't work perfectly, particularly on watercolor paper. Depending on the weather and how wet your pen is, some of those inks take quite a while to dry, and even then, leave a residue that can taint the washes. And while your watercolor layer also needs time to dry, it's usually not nearly as long a wait. Those big wet washes happen early in the process, and most of the painting is usually completely dry by the time you finish. Of course, another technical advantage is that you don't have to worry about using semi-transparent washes that might possibly obscure your lines. But beyond the simple technical advantages, there's a far more important reason why you might want to start with watercolor. When working with ink, it's hard to know how dark your lines need to be and where you need to stop. As I mentioned in the previous sketch, I often find myself not going dark enough, or sometimes over-rendering and going too dark. You would think that I would have learned to anticipate such things after three decades of using this technique, but I still screw up. The fact is, it's very difficult to gauge just how heavy the lines need to be when working against white paper. Everything looks very dark on it, and it tricks you into being very cautious. When you watercolor first, you can see exactly how dark to make your lines, and where they're really needed, allowing you to make more effective decisions. With watercolor, I'm much more certain when I need to stop. All I have to do is work until I reach that very last step of putting in my darkest darks, my textures, and my sharp details, and leave those for the inking stage. And when I ink, I know exactly how dark to make my lines, and where to place them. In short, because you're inking over an image, and not on white paper, the inking is more accurate, more responsive, and ultimately better integrated with a watercolor layer.
While I do think the second method is more effective, it also has some drawbacks. The first is minor, but should be pointed out. For some reason, lines put down over watercolor are slightly wider. Perhaps it's because watercolor limits the absorbency of the paper, but the ink has a tendency to spread wider over washes. It's not a big difference, but it is noticeable. The second technical drawback is more significant. Watercolor will make thinner papers buckle, so if you're going to use this approach, you'll need a paper that's thicker and not as subject to buckling. The third drawback is that, unless you're proficient in pure watercolor technique, it's a more difficult way of working. In the first method, you're essentially coloring in a pre-existing drawing, one that already has a degree of depth, texture, and detail. As I mentioned previously, this means that your watercolor technique can be simpler and less accurate. This technique is pure watercolor up to the very last stage, so unless you have decent control over your brush and watercolor technique in general, it's going to be a bit of a struggle. But no matter, challenges are good, and perhaps doing this technique will also improve your ability to do watercolor all by itself. Here is my completed sketch, which I feel is an improvement over the first one. Not everything that makes this piece better than the first can be attributed to the order in which I did things, and frankly, there are actually a few things that are better in the first attempt. But starting with the watercolor first definitely played a part. For one thing, the color mixing is better in this sketch, probably because I wasn't worried about obscuring the lines and mixed the colors more accurately. Secondly, the line quality is much bolder and better integrated with the washes. So, to conclude, while both methods work very well, the second one might just be a little better, depending on the materials you're using, of course, your style, and your particular subject matter. If you haven't tried working with watercolor first, I recommend you try it for yourself. Or better yet, do two versions of the same subject, like I did, which will allow you to better compare the results and see which one works best for you. And by the way, for those of you that would like a more in-depth explanation of how I work, I'm going to release a full-length video where I narrate all the steps, starting with the compositional considerations that I use, dealing with the intricacies of watercolor, and finally, the complexities of the inking process. Look for that video sometime early next year. Okay, thanks for watching. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below, and bye for now.